All right, so my name is Paul Chapman, and I am the founder of the Plant-Based Nutrition Support Group. And I could just say quickly, it's been uh, seven and a half years ago. I could not take seven steps. I had 100% block in my right artery, two at 65, 70%. And there was that moment where I could not take but seven steps, and I was in real pain. And um, I, I was received, I, I got a couple of miracles. I, I was able to get into the Cleveland Clinic quickly. I was able to find a doc, I, I got assigned a doctor. It just happened his mentor was Dr. Caldwell Esselstyn. Now you remember, I had no idea about nutrition back then. I knew absolutely nothing about Dr. Esselstyn. It was the first time I was ever in the Cleveland Clinic. And here I was on a gurney being wheeled in for either heart transplant or bypass surgery. As it turned out, I needed immediate bypass surgery. I'm on a gurney being wheeled in. And my doctor looks at me just in front of the door and says, if you're willing to make a nutritional change, maybe we don't need surgery. Just so everybody knows, my dad and his three brothers all had quadruple bypasses when I was between the ages of 10 and 14. Two of them died at the table. One of them was never the same. And I watched my dad cry for four days straight. I got three sons. I was highly motivated to make a change. Unfortunately, I knew nothing about nutrition and I said yes to it. So within about 14 days, the angina went away. Uh, I, I was bedridden for about three months to shrink a large heart, leaky valves. And I made a solemn promise that I'd get back. And here we are, let's fast forward seven and a half years later. We are getting close to 7,700 members we are, have over 50 small groups in six other states. We're going to keep expanding, and we're going to do it the right way with compassion. So I want to let you know, everybody, our mission statement is simple. We're a nonprofit organization. We're dedicated to the evidence-based education and advocacy of a plant-based whole food nutrition and active lifestyle to help you prevent and reverse chronic diseases and achieve optimal health. We will never change our mission. And again, I can't underscore enough. What I've learned is everyone takes it at their own pace and allow us to help you along the way. So uh, a lot of people who have been to the meetings in person know that I like sharing a few jokes and I'm gonna share one with you right now. So the other day, my wife said, I have been acting like a flamingo. So I had to put my foot down. All right, everyone's <laughs> muted. I, I, I see it in your faces. Let me, for those who've seen it before, let me follow it up with one more. May I? Thank you. Um, here we go. Uh, how many tickles does it take to make an octopus, an octopus laugh? So how many tickles does it take to make an octopus laugh? Okay, no one knows because you're all muted. Tentacles. Tentacles. Ha, ha, ha. Tentacles. All right. So that's that's for because we all have kids or grandkids. And I promise you'll get two more. Okay. This is new stuff. Took me hundreds of hours to come up with. Trust me. All right. So let me also introduce real quickly. Today we have Marion Treese. And Marion is behind the scenes, our MVP. She keeps everybody in line on the management side of PBNSG. And before everyone joined in, I was just telling her just how pleased I am that she's part of this team. She is whole food plant-based. She lives it, she loves us and we love her. And I'm also would like to introduce somebody who's very new to the organization, not new to me. And uh, she is taking on what I consider the most important piece of PBNSG, which is small groups. So I'd like to introduce Megan Burke. Megan, hello, how are you? And uh, anybody who is not part of a small group, it's time to join. Anybody who wants to host, you'll work your way through Megan. But this is what is the most important thing. It's called community without judgment. So Megan will be leading the charge and she'll be starting in about 10 days, but her and I have known each other for years and already um, she's, working behind the scenes okay right, right. so we're excited to have her thank you both thank you. so much um all right so it's very important that everybody mutes up okay and uh there will be about 10 minutes for q a at the end 
And between uh, Marion and I, we'll try and uh, get through it really quickly. Uh, all right, so coming up, real coming up. By the way, if you notice, two shirts. We've expanded our merchandise. Rip is wearing it proudly. Nice pecs, bro. Okay. Um, <laughs> you know, thank you. And uh, I, I, I will promise everybody this. I did not ship it to him for the meeting. He purchased it a while back in a bunch of them. And uh, Rip, the next one I'm going to be sending out will be, say, it'll say OMG, big OMG. And it's going to say oil must go. Your dad will love it. Okay. Uh, so coming up, we got a whole bunch of activities coming up. On the fourth, we'll have Dylan Holmes. Well, your world will be doing a cooking demonstration and talk. Then we have uh, our monthly small group. Everyone's invited to join us. Uh, we always have a guest speaker. And uh, that will be on the 12th of November. Everything you want to know about us is on our website, www.pbnsg.org. And very fastly, www.pbnsg.org. Okay. Uh, on the 19th, Dr. Joel Furman will be joining us. Again, we'll have small groups on the December 10th with Holly Booker, an amazing chef, doing a talk as well. And then... It gets to be a lot more fun. Uh, Colin Campbell will be joining us on the 16th of December. And then my personal hero is Dr. Caldwell Esselstyn will be joining us as well on uh, uh, January 16th. And that will be followed up by the following. Dr. Greger will be back with us. Anthony Lim, Juliana Hever will be there. And I would like to also just underscore again we are a nonprofit. Key word, no profit. Okay. So as you know us, we are built on our speaker meetings that should occur between February and July. And we all know what we're dealing with. No revenue this year. So we're doing just fine. But any donations, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Margo, are you there? Yep. Margo, she's there. Margo, can you unmute, please? There she is. Hi. Hi, Hi Margo. How are you? Let me let me introduce the first speaker. Just before I do that, let me just say this on a personal note. I have been social distancing since February 14th. We made the decision two weeks before the world did to shut down out of respect to our members. And here we are all these months later. I mask up, I social distance. I do the very best mitigating I can. Um, I come from a, a split family in the world of whole food plant-based. I also come from a split family that believes not all the things I believe in with the world around us. Uh, I love my family. I have not drawn any lines that they can't cross because I love them. But I will say this, I am staying the course. I want to come out of this I, six months from now, eight months from now with the dream of having a whole food plant-based, maybe it'll be a picnic or maybe it'll be a meeting. But I look forward to the day that we all get to be together again. We're going to be together face to face. And then we're going to make sure that we have all the people around the United States, around the world, join us that day as well. And it won't be a PBNSG meeting. It'll be a, a meeting of, of, of love and, and, and remembrance, because that's what it's all about. I pray and hope everyone and everyone that you love is safe. All right. Take a deep breath. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Margot, she is a wonderful functional nutrition practitioner in the Metro Detroit area. She provides whole food plant-based nutrition programs, counseling and consultation to individuals and families. She created her own nutritional pathways based on a bio-individuality diagnosis, lifestyle and culture. What's interesting, she's got all the certificates from E. Cornell and she and complete the full body systems program. Uh, what I find so fascinating about Margot is she left me a little message saying that uh, she went to one of our meetings years ago and it helped kind of restructure what was most important in her life. And she is here today to share her experiences, her knowledge with us. And Margo, you saw my email. Please yeah, give me a call you. whenever you can. Thanks, Paul. And um, I want to say thank you so much for being here today and joining us. Well, thank you. Um... Uh, like he said, like Paul said, I'm Margo. I'm a nutritionist with a specialization in plant-based and functional nutrition. 
Um, and I just thank you, Paul and Marion and everybody at PNSG for inviting me to speak tonight. Um, I, like Paul said, I did, I switched careers to become a health practitioner because of the information that I received attending um, plant-based nutrition support group events. So I'm extremely grateful to them and to the work that they do. And I'm so happy to be a sponsor and to have the opportunity to um, be here with you tonight and to tell you a little bit about my story and what I do. So um, my story is pretty typical in the plant-based world. Um, I transitioned to a whole food plant-based after the birth of my first daughter. Um, as a vegetarian since childhood, I thought that I was healthy and doing enough because I didn't eat meat, uh, but I gained 65 pounds during the pregnancy. Uh, I actually, to my dismay, left the hospital weighing more than I did when I went in. <laughs> um, so I, was, I, was, I wasn't too concerned about my appearance because I actually, I actually liked my curves and some of the other features that I had gained, <laughs> but um, I felt, I just felt physically terrible after. And I was really starting to struggle with that and how I felt. Um, I learned that my cholesterol was extremely high. Uh, and I had that in the back of my head along with some unfortunate, unfortunate medical histories and diagnoses, diagnoses in my family. Um, and then I had this tiny face looking up at me that I was now responsible for. And I decided that I really needed to take my health more seriously um, for my sake and for her sake. And I needed to figure out a better way to take care of myself so I could be there for her and teach her to do the same, right? So um, I came across and read and tried various fad diets, um, but a lot of them just didn't make sense to me. Um, especially, especially like low carb, um, just didn't make a lot of sense for me from a physical perspective and from what I knew. Um, but I wanted something, I wanted something that was proven and sustainable and I wanted to stop ping ponging. So um, at the suggestion of a friend and after putting it off for way too long, I watched Forks Over Knives um, and was completely blown away. This led me to um, actually reading Rip's father's book, Caldwell Elselston's um, book, Preventing and Reversing Heart Disease, and the China study by T. Colin Campbell, and um, led me to going to these plant-based nutrition support group uh, events. Um, so at that point, I had mostly transitioned to whole food plant-based, but even though I had um, all of that information, I knew what I needed to do. It was extremely difficult for me to apply it in my own life. Um, and this is now um, being a health practitioner. It's what I hear again and again in my work and from my peers. And, um, and, and one of the major reasons why I do what I do, because um, for some reason, you know, for some, it's, it's really easy to transition to this plant no, whole food plant-based diet. And I'm, that's amazing. And I'm so happy for you if you can do that. But um, as incredible and important as this transitioning to a whole food plant-based lifestyle is um, for our health and our well-being, there are so many pitfalls to transitioning. And that's what I dealt with personally and what I hear in my work. So a couple of the things that I dealt with is you know, and the things that I learned is that food is so strongly tied to human connection. Um, it can bring us together as part of our heritage and cultures from having a breakfast with a friend to eating dinner with your family and holidays. Um, when we break bread together, it's bonding. Um, when you eat differently than others, there, there can be pushback. There can be, you know, we hear a lot of unsolicited and scientifically unfounded advice from strangers. Uh, there can be pressure and intense questioning from friends and family. And I've even experienced outright criticism and, and anger in some cases. Um, food is, it's, it's very strongly tied to our sense of self and our ego. Um, we're constantly bombarded with marketing. And as much as we don't like to admit it, we have been conditioned to think a certain way about certain foods. Meat is manly, right? And um, milk does the body good. I'm sure you've heard that one. Um, 
there are also a ton of social constructs that get in the way. Um, even medical teams pushing pharmacology over lifestyle changes um, because it's the easy way. We all want a quick fix. There's a, also a massive lack of education in the nutrition in traditional medicine. Uh, and there's that biological component, that physical addiction to uh, fats and sugars. So with all of these factors combined, it makes it really difficult to transition sometimes. And this is where it's so important to insulate yourself with support in different areas so that way you can be successful and healthy. Um, the plant-based nutrition support group excels in this area and with these events and small groups, classes, and so one of the reasons why I always recommend them as a resource um, and an avenue for that support, for that community and uh, for that human connection that sometimes we can miss. Um, I also want to be a resource as well. I, my goal is to help clients create a pathway for transitioning through the lens of functional nutrition. So that essentially means not only taking in medical history, but all of these other lifestyle factors and pitfalls that um, I'm talking about. So um, I tried to be a partner and a guide in this journey and to advocate for you and to teach you to advocate for your own health as well. So um, if you want to talk about any of this, you can uh, contact me through the Plant-Based Nutrition Support Group's website. I, there's a link to my website on there. Um, you can also find me on Facebook at Margo Ann Nutrition. And again, I just want to, to be a resource, resource to you if anyone's out there transitioning and struggling or wants to transition but is, is scared away by any of these factors. Um, it's difficult. It, it's difficult sometimes, um, especially with families, uh, um, which is one area that I like to focus in. So um, with that, I'm going to end because I'm so excited to hear Rip speak. And thanks, Paul and everyone for listening and stay safe. Thank you. Hey, we're all, yay, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, Margo, thank you so much. And you, you honor me by uh, making that change uh -huh. and uh, keep up the good work and give me a call. Um, right, thank you. Before, before we get Rip to, to get, it, get it on and get it going, um, everyone may want to write these down. Here we go. When does a joke become a dad joke? When it becomes apparent. <laughs> right, all right, I'm yes. seeing it. All right, I'm feeling it. Okay, last one. And I will continue to work hard at improving. Um, this is for the uh, for, for the for Halloween. Here we go. Why didn't the skeleton go to the Halloween party? No one's talking. You're all muted. It's beautiful. Uh, because he had no body to go with. All right. Well, I know you missed that part of me. I do. And um, let me just say this. Uh, Rip, I think, was the very first person who graced our stage many years ago. So when it all started, you know, you'd have Dr. Khan and myself up there for a few months. And then I read about this guy and I said, man, I, you know, I've been, re I read about everything. And I said, no, this Rip Esselstyn, he's the one I want first. And, and you know, I, I, maybe I could just uh, respect the fact of what he did or maybe because, you know, his last name was Esselstyn and his dad saved my life. Okay, that had something to do with it. Or his dad gave me 50 bucks to get him in, in, into Michigan. I don't know. But, you know, one thing that's been consistent is his message, his passion. Yes, your name his, on the participant list and sent you a private message. Uh, who's to, uh, okay, mute up. Okay, here we go. So I'd like to... Um, share a little bit about RIP with all of you, and then it's, uh, it's all RIPs for the next half an hour. So RIP Esselstyn is the founder of the Plant Strong by Engine 2 and a plant-based nutrition group board member. He is a health and wellness advocate and has spent the last decade as a healthy eating partner with Whole Foods Market. He is currently branching out all tools and resources with Plant Strong by Engine 2 across multiple platforms to educate and empower people to live their plant, best plant-based, plant-strong life. 
um, as I continue to toggle between a few different things here. Oh, excuse me, guys. Uh, okay, here we go. I'm going to continue. Rip spent a decade as one of the premier triathletes in the world. Then he joined Austin, Texas Fire Department, where he was introduced. He introduced his passion for a whole food plant based diet to Austin Engine 2 Firehouse in order to rescue a firefighter's brother's health. To document his success, he wrote the best selling book, The Engine 2 Diet which shows the irrefutable connection between plant-based diet and good health. And oh my, what a time to be like whole food plant-based. Okay, that was a personal note. Uh, the Engine 2 Diet, which shows, okay, <laughs> he is featured prominently in the documentary Forks Over Knives. As the founder of Engine 2, Rip develops and implements a range of programs and events geared toward education, inspiring, and nurturing plant strong living for individuals, families, organizations across the globe. He has appeared on hundreds of radio and national television shows, including the Today Show, CBS Sunday Morning, Good Morning America, The Oz Show. Rip is a New York best-selling author who has published four books, and his most recent book is The Engine 2 Cookbook. I got it. I love it. Um, he is the host of new and networthy Plant Strong podcast for each week. He shares conversations showing the latest science practical applications of plant-based diet as a means to achieve optimal health. He was the executive producer of The Game Changers, a revolutionary documentary, documentary that shatters the myths about meat, protein, and strength. He broke the world record in the 200-meter backstroke for men 55 to 59 two years ago. He lives in Austin with his beautiful wife, beautiful kids. Ladies and gentlemen, my dear friend, somebody I think is one of my true plant-based heroes, Rip Esselstyn. Yay! Rip, it's all yours. All right. Thank you, Paul. And if I want to uh, share the screen, just go ahead and share the screen, do my thing, right? Yep. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, PBNSG. Uh, Paul, you have done a spectacular thing. Uh, your passion, your commitment, your dedication uh, knows no boundaries. Uh, and uh, it, it, it's amazing, amazing how uh, all the good work that you've done and how many people want to contribute to the to what you started. How, when did you start this? Ten years ago? Uh, you know what? It's been seven, 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 seven. years. That's right. And uh, yeah, who would have thought, Rip, that all the you know years later, we'd have so many healthier people. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I got to fly here if I've got half an hour because I want to share with you what I consider to be um, true, true north when it comes to really reclaiming your, your lost health. So you, Paul, will you let me know if I have successfully, can you guys see my screen right now? Paul, yeah? Uh, Marion, what do you think? Yeah. yeah, I can see it, yes. Can you see, should... can you see that? Yes. All right, you can see that? Yeah. All right, good, good. All right, so we're gonna get into the seven pillars. Uh, first, I'll just say, you know, I wrote this book back in 2009. Obviously, my, my goal then was to get a, a bunch of uh, meat-eating uh, Texas firefighters uh, off, off, uh, off the crack and, and onto, the, onto the plants. We did it successfully, wrote this, my first book. And the next thing I know, I'm, uh, I'm pushing the plants far and wide. I retired from firefighting. I became partners with Whole Food Market Stores went gallivanting all over the United States, Canada, and, and the UK, uh, pushing the benefits of a whole food plant-based diet. Along the way, uh, I wrote my second book called Plant Strong. Uh, and then my third book is the one I want to talk about tonight. It's called The Engine to Seven Day Rescue Diet. And really what, what motivated me to write this book was John Mackey, the CEO of Whole Foods, asked me if I would be one of their healthy eating immersion partners. So take some of Whole Foods' sickest team members that they had to medically qualify and then Whole Foods would pay for them to go and learn from soup to nuts, everything about embracing this lifestyle. And that started in 2010. Uh, I'm still doing it. We typically do right around two a year. And so before I wrote this book, I'd probably had 
close to 12 different groups of 100 that came through. That's almost 1,200 different data points that I was able to work from. And within literally the first year, I was going, I can't believe what's happening in just seven days. In seven days, people are dropping their cholesterol on average, you know, 25 to 75 points. They're dropping three to eight pounds. They're going from pre-diabetic to no longer being considered diabetic. Um, they're, they're feeling fantastic. So I was like, I've got to write another book on this. And I call it the rescue diet because every one of you that's out there, this is for you, meaning you can rescue your own health with the power of foods. It, it doesn't take a doctor. It doesn't matter what your genetics are. It doesn't matter any of that, your brothers, your sisters, any of that. The only thing that matters is you being willing to kind of basically toe the line and decide to follow these seven tried and true pillars. And my promise to you is if you work the program, the program will work for you. And it's that simple. So, and don't look for loopholes, don't look for shortcuts. You wanna just follow the different pillars. We have seven pillars because I love the number seven. There's seven days in a week. There's seven, um, there's seven colors in the rainbow. There's seven musical notes. There's seven uh, dwarfs in uh, Snow White. There's seven Harry Potter uh, books that my kids absolutely adore. And there's seven habits of highly effective people and seven is just a, an all around lucky number. So we're gonna start off here. And I'm, gonna, I'm gonna see if I can, well, uh, I'm trying to get rid of something here on my screen. Let me do something here. There we go. Uh, all right. Um, pillar number one is why we love plants. I want you guys to know that plants is, it's where the deep dive in nutrition resides. This is where all the glory is found. And this is where it all starts. Uh, it truly is strong food. Now, the weak food is the food that we all grew up thinking was strong. We just were programmed to believe as much due to, you know, marketing and, and all that nonsense. But I'm going to go around counterclockwise here. And just to show you why, whether up at the top here with red meat, why, whether it paws a hoof, whether it flaps a wing, whether it wiggles a fin, or whether it comes in a shell, all these things contain the building blocks that promote chronic Western disease. We'll start with cholesterol. Your average piece of red meat, 70 milligrams per three ounces. Chicken, 70 milligrams per three ounces, the exact same amount. Most fish has more. Wild caught salmon is about 60 milligrams per three ounce. And your an egg, one egg yolk, I'm sorry. Yeah, one egg yolk, 212 milligrams uh, of cholesterol. That's the same as two Burger King Whoppers. And the number one risk factor for heart disease is an elevated cholesterol level. We don't need to be consuming any animal cholesterol and cholesterol is only found in animal products. There's none in plants. Next thing, fat, saturated fat also raises cholesterol levels and it does a myriad of things as well as you know clogging our arteries, but your leanest piece of red meat is about 40% saturated fat. Your leanest piece of white chicken breast, 30% saturated fat. Salmon, wild caught salmon, 20% saturated fat and eggs are 67% fat. Of that 67% fat, 20% is coming from saturated fat. So just going around the horn here, you can see it's no, it's no wonder that 50% of Americans are crumbling from, uh, from heart disease because this is on the dinner plate, the breakfast plate, the lunch plate, of probably 90% of Americans. And it's absolutely uh, unfortunate. Next thing we have is dairy products. I call dairy products basically uh, different iterations of meat. That's why milk is liquid meat, uh, yogurt is runny meat, ice cream is frozen meat, and cheese is hardened meat. All these dairy products basically have the same amount of cholesterol, The uh, some of them more saturated fat. The number one a uh, source of saturated fat in the American diet comes from cheese. I like to say that, you know, uh, cheese is just dairy crack and most Americans are worshiping at the church of cheeses seven days a week. We got it. We got to stop the nonsense. Um, 
You guys know that we are the only species that drink another species milk. The only reason that Paul or I will allow any of you to drink milk, to have, have yogurt, do cheese, do ice cream, is if you call your mother, this is a Paul joke, if you call your mother and she answers the phone and she says, moo, moo, <laughs> right? Uh, otherwise, right, there's no excuse. You guys you can't. <laughs> you, yeah, 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 yeah. You, you, you can't be doing it. Pillar number two, why we really love whole plants. Now, we're looking for food that's as close to grown as possible, that's minimally processed. We're talking about broccoli and kale and grapes and sweet potatoes and whole grain pasta and all kinds of beans and berries and oranges and apples and whole grains like brown rice. This is where that true glory is found in, in nutrition. I'm not talking about this. And unfortunately, you know, we have so many people that are now going plant-based, they're going vegan, but they're doing it the wrong way. They're not doing the whole food plant-based like PBNSG promotes. So, you know, they're doing the French fries they're, that are 50% fat. They're doing the diet cheese that's 70% fat and the first, second and third ingredient are different types of oil. They're doing these ridiculous vegan plant-based cupcakes and donuts. Uh, it says 100% dairy-free vegan, but it's loaded with oil and all kinds of sugars. They're doing the Ben and Jerry's uh, plant-based ice creams, 11 varieties of them, but they're loaded with coconut oil and they're close to 70% fat as well. They're doing the impossible and the Beyond Meat burgers that taste amazing, but there's three different oils in the first three ingredients. They're 70% fat and they got enough salt to sink a ship. We're doing, you know, we're finding an excuse to do wine, uh, saying it's the Mediterranean thing. It's the French paradox. But the reality is it's just empty calories uh, that are going to jack your triglycerides, contribute to breast cancer, prostate cancer, and uh, basically uh, inhibit your body's ability to, to burn fat by about 30%. Uh, we got all these cereals that are cloak, cloaking themselves as, as healthy whole grain cereals when the second and fourth and fifth ingredients are, are sugar. Earth balance spread. Uh, again, one tablespoon is 100 calories. And uh, the first and second ingredients are different oils. Palm oil, canola oil. You know, really, you got to give me a break on that one. You got fried chips that are 50% fat. And then, of course, we got, we got oil, whether it's olive oil, canola oil, safflower oil, walnut oil, co coconut oil. They're all 120 calories a tablespoon, 100% fat, no nutritional integrity to speak of, a black hole of nutritional nothingness. Let's get our oils, let's get our fat from the whole food source. Go to, you know, if you got to, go to the olives, go to the avocado, go to the nuts, go to the oats, go to the green leafies. Now, this is going to take a second, but I'm going to go through this in probably a minute and a half. We love whole plant-based foods because they have the best complement of macro and micronutrients. Macronutrients have calories and everybody needs them. It's protein, it's carbohydrates and fat. Whole plant-based foods, they have the Goldilocks when it comes to protein. When it comes to carbohydrates, they have the premium fuel source for our over 36 trillion cells in our body. We love carbohydrates but they got to be complex, unprocessed carbs, not the simple trashy carbs. And then when it comes to fat, we're getting all the good fats, none of the saturated fats for the most part, no trans fats. We're getting polyunsaturated fats and some monounsaturated fats, and your body will thank you for it. When it comes to vitamins, 11 of the 13 vitamins originate in plants. The two exceptions, vitamin D, which you get from the sunshine, and vitamin B12, which we all know you get from... Uh, my, uh, the, uh, from the soil. And, uh, and that's the one thing we recommend you take a, uh, take a supplement on, that, the B12. My father likes 5,000 microgram tablet once a week. Uh, minerals, there's 17 major and minor minerals. They come from the soil. Guess what? You eat a whole food plant-based diet as close to grown as possible. You're getting all the minerals in the best retainable form possible. 
Antioxidants, on average, plants have 64 times more antioxidants than animal-based foods that are gonna basically zap those free radicals uh, and prevent, uh, prevent chronic cholesterol disease. Phytonutrients are gonna prevent DNA damage. Again, like antioxidants, they're gonna zap those free radicals uh, and they're only found in plants. There's over 20,000 known phytonutrients and there could be another 20, 30,000 more that are out there. And then of course we have fiber. Fiber is your friend. Fiber makes the world go around. Fiber, we're just learning now, is what's gonna give you the healthiest, most bulletproof type of gut microbiome that exists. And of course we all know it helps flush out toxins. It keeps you, uh, it keeps you as regular as a Swiss commuter train. Um, and um, it satiates you and fills you up. So fiber is absolutely crucial. Pillar number three, let me just make sure I'm doing okay. I'm doing all right. Pillar number three is why we don't drink our food. The problem when you drink your food is your brain and your stomach don't register these calories as calories. And so you'll invariably consume the same amount of calories on top of any liquid calories you consume. And, uh, and that's a problem. So let me just give you a quick example. Orange juice, if you were to eat that small orange, the left of the glass, you get 45 calories, you get two and a half grams of fiber and nine grams of sugar. And that sugar, because it comes with the fiber, it's slowly absorbed like a nice big log in a fire. Wonderful, we like our sugar coming attached to fiber and fruit. However, if you drink that, that eight ounce glass of orange juice, you're gonna get 134 calories, only half a gram of fiber and 23 grams of sugar, all right? No bueno. So this is why we want to we want to chew our food. We want to uh, we don't want to drink it. If you look, go around the clock from when we wake up until we uh, go to bed, most Americans are consuming on average 500 to 1,000 liquid calories between our coffee with sugar and creamer, our juice, our soy mocha frappuccinos, our uh, our green juices, our muscle our muscle powders, our coconut waters that are just sugar water, our red wine. It all adds up. So pillar number three, just drink water. We're just drinking water like the other 20,000 mammals on the planet. And if you gotta do coffee, do it black. Uh, why we care about calorie density. This is a huge pillar. Um, and calorie density is the number of calories in a pound of food. And once you understand this, uh, this pillar, it's an absolute game changer. If you eat, consistently above the red line, legumes, whole intact grains like brown rice, quinoa, millet, amaranth. You do all kinds of potatoes, new potatoes, sweet potatoes, Yukon gold potatoes. You do all the fruits, vegetables. It's almost impossible for you to gain weight and you're gonna find your ideal, um, your ideal weight probably within six months. Some people sooner, some people a little bit longer, depending upon how much you have to lose. If you're eating below the line, 1,200 to 4,000 calories per pound, animal products, refined carbs, white flour, um, bagels, donuts, ding-dongs, junk food, Oreos, um, uh, let's see, uh, God, you know, uh, actually bacon is about 2,600 calories per pound, nuts and seeds are 2,800, oils are 4,000. You can't help but gain weight. And the only way you can lose weight is by portion control, counting calories, weighing and measuring your food. And that's not fun, right? We don't, I mean, eating should not be a scientific experiment. So you got to eat above the red line. And now it's easy because everything comes in this wonderful package with water and fiber. And it basically fills you up before you've had time to take in too many calories. Let me give you some examples right, just to drive this home. So this is a bowl of oatmeal. Oatmeal is about 350 calories a pound. And how do we cook those oats? We cook them in water. And that water basically brings down the calorie density tremendously. If you were just to have a bowl of oats that are raw, right, that aren't cooked in water, those are about 1600 calories a pound. So that's why I tell people, if you really gotta lose the weight, right, do oatmeal, don't do the dried oats. Rice, brown rice is about 500 calories a pound. Rice chips, 2,800 calories a pound. 
Kale, 60 calories a pound. These kale chips, right around 2,500 calories a pound. Grapes, 300 calories a pound. But you take the grapes, you dry them out, you turn them into raisins, and all of a sudden the calorie density has gone from 300 calories a pound to almost 1,500 calories a pound. And the only thing that's changed is no more water. Sweet potatoes, 350 calories a pound. But you take those, you turn them into French fries, you just place the water with oil, the most calorie dense food on the planet, and all of a sudden you got 2,000 calories a pound instead of 350. Whole grain pasta, 500 calories a pound. We don't mind whole grain pasta because that pasta is cooked in water. Water is your friend. Water and fiber combine to absolutely create this bulk and satiation, but you, you don't dry it out. You, you take the exact same ingredients and you use bread. Bread's about 1500 calories a pound. Now on the seven day rescue, we don't mind bread, especially if you're not trying to lose more than 25 pounds. Uh, otherwise, we recommend that you do open face sandwiches because that bread is too calorie dense. And instead, we want you to use collard wraps. Collard wraps make great bread when you're really trying to drop the pounds and regain your, regain your health. All right, pillar number five is why we don't care a fig about protein. The analogy that I like to give is, you know, as a firefighter, I know that that the air that we're all breathing right now is 21% oxygen and 79% nitrogen. But nobody is worried about, oh my God, am I getting enough uh, oxygen with each breath that I'm taking? No. I want you to be that confident when it comes to the plant-based foods that you're eating because every plant-based foods has all the protein you need to absolutely cover all of your bases. So quick lesson, proteins are just composed of chains of amino acids, there's 20 recognized amino acids. Of those, nine are considered, considered essential, which means you have to get them from your food because they can't be synthesized by your body. They are histidine, isoleucine, uh, lysine, uh, leucine, lysine, methionine, phenylalanine, threonine, tryptophan, and uh, valine. I want you to know that every whole food plant-based product has the perfect combination and proportion of all of these essential amino acids. So you don't have to do any of this ridiculous combining and anything like that, all right? That is ancient history. If you look here, this is the percentage of calories that come from protein and plant-strong foods. On the left, you can see white mushrooms are 57% protein. All the way to the right, red bell peppers are about 12%. And in the middle there, you got pinto beans, kidney beans that are in the, in the mid 20s. So nobody's gonna blow it. And according to the World Health Organization, I'm sure you guys know this, we only need right around five to 10% of our calories coming from protein. And much more than that, it does us no benefit. We either pee it away or we store it as fat um, uh, in our system. So uh, do not get hung up on protein. Uh, there is uh, no such thing as quashia core in this country. And that's the medical term for protein deficiency. If any of you have any questions about protein, go watch the Game Changers again. They do a beautiful job talking about um, how the strongest, safest, um, smartest form of protein comes from plants. You cut out the middle man, you cut out the middle chicken, the middle fish, the middle cow, and now you get rid of all the cholesterol, the saturated fat, the uh, inflammatory mediators that come in those animal products. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Pillar number six, we got to go easy on salt, sugar, and fat. You got to be your best advocate when it comes to shopping because these food manufacturers are trying to make you addicted to their foods by putting salt on top of sugar, on top of fat, and then salt on top of sugar, on top of fat. It is absolutely ridiculous. So when it comes to salt, most Americans are getting three to 5,000 milligrams of sodium a day, right? According to the, uh, the Institute of Medicine, the, the, uh, the, the top level should be about 1,500 milligrams. So where's it all coming from? It's coming from the restaurants and it's coming from packaged food. It represents 80% of the sodium that Americans are getting. Just to give you some examples here, and I'm going to be fine when it comes to time, is Red Lobster, the Admiral Feast Meal, 
5,000 milligrams. That's for one meal. Cheesecake Factory's breakfast burrito, 3,640 milligrams. AMC's Bavarian Legend Soft Pretzel, 7,600 milligrams. Due to COVID, not many people have been uh, having many of those Bavarian Legend Soft Pretzels, and that's probably a good thing. Amy's Low-Fat Chunky Vegetable Soup, two servings per can, will give you 1,420 milligrams. That's your daily supply right there. 365 organic vegetable broth, 500 milligrams per cup. Soups and veggie broths are notorious for being, having elevated sodium levels. And Pepperidge Farm, hearty white bread, 460 milligrams a slice. The number one source of sodium in the American um, diet is coming from packaged breads. Uh, sugar. Most Americans are getting 30 added teaspoons of sugar a day. That's 140 pounds per year. It's just empty calories and um, not doing your bodies any, any favors. We want to keep it to under two during the seven-day rescue uh, program. And those two are really, really uh, confined to salad dressings and every once in a while uh, a dessert or two. But going from 30 to two is fantastic. Let me just give you some examples of sugar in packaged foods. Yoplait, 99% fat-free harvest peach, 26 grams of sugar in one of those little six ounce containers. That's 6.5 teaspoons. How I did the math there, there's four, there's four grams in a teaspoon. So you divide it, the grams by four, and that's how you get 6.5, right? Lechoy, teriyaki marinade and sauce, eight grams per tablespoon. That's two teaspoons of, um, of sugar. Smucker's strawberry jam, there's 12 grams in a tablespoon. That's three teaspoons. Ken's fat-free sun-dried vinaigrette, 12 grams that in two tablespoons, that's three, 12 grams in two tablespoons, that's three teaspoons. Francesco Rinaldi traditional pasta sauce, 11 grams and a half a cup, that's three teaspoons. Quaker oatmeal express cinnamon roll, um, that's the flavor. 17 grams in a 1.9 ounce cup, gives you four teaspoons. And the Lean Cuisine Roasted Turkey Breast, 27 grams in a nine and three quarter ounce serving, seven teaspoons. Arizona green tea with ginseng and honey, 34 grams in a 16 ounce container, that's 8.5 teaspoons. My point here is that whether it is yogurt, whether, it's, whether it is salad dressings, whether it's jams, whether it's pasta sauces, oatmeal, uh, what most people think is healthy turkey breast and, uh, and, and a healthy tea, they're loaded with added sugars. So our, um, I, I'm gonna go back when I finish this and tell you what, the, uh, what we gotta do. Fat, 35 to 50% of America's calories are coming from fat and it's coming from saturated fat, trans fats. The number one source of trans fats these days since the ban on trans fats in, uh, in packaged foods is coming from animal products. And then 10 to 15% is where we want to be coming from whole plant-based foods, the polyunsaturated and the monounsaturated fats, all the good, none of the bad. So the fat in restaurant packaged foods, to give you an example, Cheesecake Factory fish and chips, 121 grams of fat and 26 grams of saturated fat. Now, bear with me here. According to the American Heart Association, the upper limit of saturated fat that we want per day for a healthy heart, and remember, and these guys don't get it right in a lot of different places, and they're high here, is 7% of your calories coming from saturated fat. 7% of a 2,000 calorie a day diet is 140 calories. There's 9.5 calories in a gram of fat. That means we want our upper limit for, for grams of saturated fat per day, people, to be 14 grams. Cheesecake Factory, that one meal is 26 grams of saturated fat. Macaroni grill, 56 grams of saturated fat. This whole hog burger and fries, 82 grams of saturated fat, all right? This Terra vegetable chips that so many people think are healthy, 18 grams uh, of fat. I don't have the saturated fat there. Wolfgang Puck's organic creamy butternut squash, 11 grams. And then Marie Callender's chicken pot pie, 62 uh, grams of fat in a 16.5 uh, ounce uh, pie. 
Uh, I'm going to skip that one. So let me let me just see here. Paul, you're, you're challenging me here to get this all in in, in, uh, in, in 32 minutes. So I'm going to go back for a sec and say this. Um, when it comes to sodium, we want our milligrams of sodium to be at or under the number of calories per serving. If you do that and you follow that little rule, that little guideline, you will keep your um, milligrams of sodium for the day under 1500. When it comes to sugar, we want to look at that, the ingredient list uh, on, the, on the label and make sure that there's no sugar in the first three ingredients. And then after that, we want to make sure there's no more than three different types of sugar in the remaining ingredients. And then when it comes to fat, we got to make sure that it's no more than 25% of the calories coming from fat. And we also want to make sure that there's no partially hydrogenated oils. There's, there's no, um, I'm sorry, we got, we got a little distraction here. There's no partially hydrogenated oils. There's no um, uh, other free oils and there's no lard, butter or animal fats in there. Okay, uh, pillar number seven, why we wanna move. Uh, this is a little study that came out of the Cleveland Clinic. It appeared in JAMA Network Open. It involved 1, 122,000 people over 23 years. And the conclusion was not exercising may be worse for your health than smoking study says. So the moral of this study is we, we wanna eat a whole food plant-based diet and we wanna move. We wanna exercise, even if it's just for five minutes a day. I took this little film here of my mother about an hour and a half ago and she's 85, listen to this. Hey Rip, was there an audio to that? Yeah, yeah. The, I guess my audio is my audio is not hooked up. I wonder why, how I do that. I, uh, well, your mom I'm, looks younger. Oh. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> anyway, I'm I'm sorry. I don't have the audio. So, hey, 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 Rip, just yeah. to let you know and everybody know, we're yeah. not going to stick to the one hour strict. If you need to slow it down just a tad, we're going to have time for some questions after. So, well, okay, okay. Let you know. Yeah, yeah. I I, I appreciate it. Um, I'm just trying to figure out how I can get you guys to hear me. Uh, is anybody savvy? Does anybody know how I get you guys to hear the screen? Because I got I got another testimonial after this that I'd love for you to hear. Um, let's see. What do you think, Paul? You could try playing it on your phone on the side. I think the way that Zoom works, you can't talk and play a video at the same time. Mm -hmm. And you can't cry. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, uh, there's a box to check um computer sound when you go to share your screen yeah i think it's in the top left corner so so you stop sharing share again you want me to stop it yes all right i'll stop it stop it right. now share uh, uh. a 16 year old okay okay now, okay so now what do i do what click, do i do now click Click share again. Oh, click share again. Okay. Uh, yes. All right. Yeah. And yeah, then yeah, in yeah. the top left corner, does it say something about computer sound? Uh, can you see my screen? Well, not Back. yet because you haven't yeah. you haven't finished. But in the oh, top, oh, oh, oh. you should well, have. Yeah, let me do that. Can you can you see it oh. now? Well, yes, but. On the first pop-up where it allows you to select this, there should have been a little checkbox in the top left corner that would say share screen. So before you even got to that point, so click share screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And okay. then on the top left, does it say computer sound? No, I, I'm not seeing that, but I see basic, advanced, and files. Hey, okay. Rip. Oh, 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 I do. I got it. I'm there. I found it. I found it. Okay. Cool. Uh, awesome. 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 <laughs> Woohoo. Uh, uh, By wait, the way, wait. you she was she was interviewing for a job. You got it. <laughs> wow. That's funny. Let's uh, let's resume. Uh, yeah, this, this better be good, buddy. Oh, it is. It is. <laughs> okay. All right. Let me know if you guys can hear it. Paul, let me know. All right. Ready? I will.
Hey, I'm here. I'm back in Cleveland. I just flew in uh, for the yes. kitchen rescue this, yes. this weekend. And here is Anne getting it after it like she always does. Believe it or not, this is right outside um, the bedroom. See these lost in space doors here where uh, <laughs> where I grew up. This is the kind of the uh, the gymnasium that we had. There's all the trophies from childhood and swimming and all kinds of stuff. But Anne, <clears throat> What is your motto when it comes to moving? Do you like to move every single day? Every day, somehow or other. Really? Yep. So you want to fight off inertia? Yes, when you feel like you don't want to do it, do it. And the crazy thing is, you do feel better afterwards. You yeah. get a little more energy. Yeah, well. Um, I, I haven't done anything today. It's getting dark, but I'm going out to run. <laughs> well, that's awesome. All right, the seventh pillar, why we love exercise. <laughs> okay, so I want you guys to do your best to embrace exercise. Find a find a, a you know some buddies for accountability. I've had this master swim team that I've been a, a, a group of, I've been a member of for now thirty years, and it's just some of the tightest relationships that I've developed. Um, but it is is terrific for your mood. You get those happy endorphins flowing those uh, serotonin, it improves your brain, you get blood flowing to the hippocampus and other parts of your brain to help in addition to eating a whole food plant based diet to help prevent Alzheimer's and dementia. Uh, all you got to do is read the Sure's Eyes book, Dean and Aisha, uh, the Alzheimer's solution They talk all about the wonders of exercise for dementia. It boosts your immune system as long as you don't overdo it as long as you're not like training for a 100 miler or the, the uh, you know, Ironman triathlon. It will actually go a long way to boosting your immune system. It increases your appetite. I tell people, if any of you are having a hard time eating this food, it just doesn't, it's not as flavorful or palatable as your old, old food. Start exercising daily. And all of a sudden that oatmeal with blueberries and mango mm. and, and some, and some walnuts, mm. it's, it's going to be fantastic. It is the best thing for your bone health women. If you're trying to stave off osteoporosis. You want to do some weight bearing exercise like my mother's doing here. Uh, your bones, they need, they need that, uh, that tension. They need that friction. Uh, they otherwise are going to turn to styrofoam. They're like muscles. They're, they're like sturdy muscles. And you know what happens if you don't, if you don't work out, right? Your muscles, basically they atrophy. Same thing with your bones. They turn to styrofoam and it's never too late. It, as my mother said here, it enhances your energy. If you're feeling like, oh my God, I don't want to get out. It's, it's gray out today. It's rainy. You go out and you, you walk, you go for a bike, you go for a little jog, you do anything. You could take your dog out for a walk. You come back and you are energized. You got blood flowing all over your body. It makes it so much easier for me to get out of bed in the morning after I've exercised. I'm not lethargic. I'm like, I'm not bounding out of bed, but I don't need to like sit the hit the snooze two or three times and then the last thing i want to talk about especially for people that are over the age of 30 paul how many people in your group are over the age of 30 most of them uh, uh, most are. most all right so there's something called sarcopenia and it's basically it's a medical term for wasting away of muscle mass and it happens every year after the age of 30 whether you like it or not so you've got to do what my mother is doing right now. I don't know if you guys saw, I, ha I had an Instagram post about, oh, maybe a week ago, two weeks ago, where my mom is dragging a tire, a car tire up a hill that's fastened to her waist, but she's 85 years old and she's got the body of a 25 year old. It, it is absolutely remarkable, but you want to prevent that, that muscle loss because when you get older, if you don't have that, you're gonna have, you wanna increase your resting metabolic rate, which is the number of calories that you're gonna burn when you're just sleeping, when you're sitting. Um, and also when you start losing muscle mass, you are more prone to stumbles and falls and spills. And we know what happens then, especially after the age of 65, it makes it harder to recover. And a lot of times there's a downward spiral. This is just an example. I got this slide from my father. This is a cross section of a, of a quadricep. That's the thigh of different men. The upper left-hand corner is a 40-year-old triathlete. 
the dark, the dark spot is muscle mass, the white is fat. And then the white in the very middle is the bone. You can see on the right, the 74 year old sedentary uh, uh, male, you can see how much fat he has and how much little muscle mass he has. And on the bottom, a 70 year old triathlete. If you lose it, if you lose, if you, if you don't use it, you lose it. And if you use it, you don't lose it. This to me epitomizes it right here. I want you to just see, what's that? No, I, I'm going to say that uh, we, we got a bunch of questions and we got about 10 to 15. You, you got it. Everybody. You got it. You got this. We got one minute. We're done. All right. Perfect. This is just a little testimonial. Uh, somebody that uh, took the seven day rescue and had phenomenal results. Here you go. I'm here in LA. I'm here with Jane. Drove in from Palm Springs, right? Yeah. And Jane, you've been doing this 15 months. What's happened here? Um, 15 months time. My fibromyalgia is gone. My asthma is gone. My lifelong acid reflux is gone. Uh, sciatic pain, knee pain, I've had injections, um, chronic sinus infections, 15 medications gone. I've got my life back. I don't have chronic pain anymore. I don't have insomnia anymore. I, can, I couldn't climb the stairs at work. I had to take the elevator. And now I can go up and down 10 times, and I try to do it three times a day at work. And I've lost 120 pounds. Say what? Um, what about your cholesterol? My cholesterol is down about, about 80 points. I, I had a stroke when I was 35, and it's because of my lifestyle. It's because of the drive through windows and not reading labels and and eating anything that would hold still. So is there any way you could show us that photo of you? Yeah, I'd be glad to show you my photo. Let me get this out. So this is Jane. Uh, before she kind of found the seven day rescue. Before I found seven day rescue challenge, this is my photo. So that's Man, my before. Do you mind if I just let everybody no, see your amazing means, figure? Yeah. Wow, yeah. Jane, way to go. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I got goosebumps, how about you? Yeah. That was yeah. All right. Let me stop. Uh, let me see if I can stop the screen share here. I'm trying to find my mouse. There we go. Okay, there. Well, while you're doing that, let me uh, let me say a couple of quickie things. Uh, Rip, as, as we're kind of moving toward questions, could you tell everybody how to reach out to you and, you know, to get your products and, you know, uh, your stuff and all that? Because I've got a lot of questions asking about how to get your uh, engine to uh, information list of products, et cetera. Yeah, I think, the, I think the easiest way to, um, in one fell swoop, to find all of our resources, our programs, our events, uh, the products is just go to plantstrong.com. And then you go there and then you click on, um, you know, the little, anyway, it'll, it'll, there's a drop down menu that gives you everything that you want right there. All right, so let's, let's do this. Marion's gonna do the chat questions. I've got the connect questions. Let me go first. Uh, before I do that, let me say that, you know, that is inspiring. And, and, and again, you know, what I would just say to people in general is you could do anything for seven, 14. I'm a big fan of 60 days. I mean, I really am because you go 60 days, 20 pounds will be lost. Numbers will be better. Start with a lipid panel. But if it's just seven days, just, just get tested first and see what it's like. But, oh my, I mean, talk about reclaiming one's health. Here we go. Yeah. Um, so Right now, uh, the question they ask is, the, she can't find your spaghetti sauce. Would they find that incredible spaghetti sauce on the website? No, no, you, you're not going to find it on our Shopify site. So I, I've had a 10-year a relationship with Whole Foods. Um, that was a 10-year contract. Uh, it, it's been an amazing partnership for the last 10 years. Uh, but we're at a point now where with the Amazon acquisition, uh, uh, there's another direction that Whole Foods is going in. So they're really focusing in on their 365 Everyday Value brand and their Whole Foods Premium brand. And they've turned the brand back over to me. But in order to make it, make it work, we got to take a much more strategic, narrow focus at the products we're bringing to market. So on our Shopify site right now, you'll find the Rift's Big Bowl cereal, you'll see the granolas, you'll see our pizza crust with a sauce pack. It's a pizza kit. Uh, we're going to be adding spice blends. We're going to be adding uh, all kinds of new products over the next couple months. But at retail level, the only thing that you're going to be able to find in Whole Foods starting in February is going to be broths and chilies. We're going to probably have three different varieties of broth and there are no added 
Sodium Bros, the only one that I know of on the market. And then also uh, some really cool uh, chilies. So right. unfortunately the pasta sauce is, is, is going away. Uh, but I would tell you, there's a great pommy. Get the pommy, no salt added, uh, crushed tomato sauce. And then also, uh, it, I mean, it's, it's spectacular. All right, uh, next thing, and, and I'm gonna share on this, that, you know, any recommendations for eating late at night? For me, just to let everybody know, and you may wanna get a pen for this, I'll give you my uh, my quick salad recipe. Here we go. Yeah. I take I take every type of salad greens minus um, romaine and iceberg. I mix it all up. I take a half of a lime. I squeeze it. I add. Oh, well, look who's behind Rip. <laughs> Don't you be shy, Essie. Come on. He okay. can't. He, he can't hear you. But uh, well, I, I, and, I, I uh, but but if you, if you want if you want we can bring him in to say hi. Nah, we'll see him in January. Okay. Um, <laughs> this is your moment. Okay, so so I take a lime, I squeeze half a lime, I take pepper, do a few shakes. I've recently added uh, red onion to it, and oh. then I just I massage it, and I leave it on the counter for about 10, 15 minutes, and my bowl is this big, and I kind of eat it all morning. But the very first thing I do every single morning is I drink a gallon of water. I drink a gallon of water every single morning. Now, what does that mean? That means I pee a lot. Yeah. However, um, once I get past that and I have my salad, I'm now ready for lunch and the rest of the day. Um, but late night, at late night, if I if I feel like having a snack, I, I'll have my fruit. I'll have some fruit. I'll have oatmeal late at night. Okay, uh, that's what I do, and uh, I just got to get over that edge. You know, that's the whole thing. When you want a snack at night, it's like you want something crunchy or you just want to have something. If you can have something, make sure it's good and healthy. Rip. Wow, I'm 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 amazed. I'm amazed you took a gallon of water for yeah, half your body that, weight in water. Half your that, body weight in water. Uh, that that sounds like a lot. Uh, so I just I'm a, I am a stickler for the uh, the big bowl cereal. It's my favorite thing in the world. I have it for breakfast, and I have a real miniature one usually uh, if I feel like I need a late night snack. Okay, uh, yep. Marion, you ready? Right, off mute. Still on mute. Okay. There you okay. go. All right, okay. Um, okay, somebody would like your opinion on plant-based protein shakes and low glycemic um, foods or shakes. Well, when it comes to uh, protein shakes, not a fan, right? I mean, again, it, it doesn't follow the pillar number three, which is we want to make sure we're always chewing our calories, not drinking them. And uh, I don't know too many people that really aren't getting enough protein. Uh, and so if you just feel like you somehow need to replenish your, you know, your, uh, your muscle stores after a hard workout, just eat, eat, eat food. I mean, I was a professional triathlete for almost a, a decade and didn't do, wasn't drinking my calories, wasn't doing, wasn't doing smoothies, wasn't doing muscle powders and stuff like that. I just think it's it's a waste of money. I would prefer that you spend your 30 bucks on on good fruits and vegetables. So, right. yeah. And then, right. and then and then when it comes to the glycemic index and stuff like that, not really um, we're not really paying attention to that. Uh, and I don't think that even Robbie Robbie and um, and Cyrus that are the mastering diabetes are paying much of attention to that. I know that Neil Barnard believes that really I think that if you're pre-diabetic type two, type two diabetic, you wanna be careful of watermelon and pineapple. And I think that's the, about the only fruit, but otherwise uh, I think the glycemic index is, uh, it depends upon the, the time of the year, how ripe the fruit is, how, you know, how ripe the, the food is. Um, and all in all, I think that they've proven that there's not much, not much to it. Okay, thank you. Um, now, what about non-dairy yogurts? What do you think about those? And um, she has too much sugar, but I think they can come unsweetened. And what about alternatives if you do like non-dairy yogurts? Hey, Rip, let me, let me just throw a quick one to you. Um, I take a silken yogurt. I take a bunch of fruit. I blend it all together, you know, when I want that yogurt taste. And you got it. I mean, it's there. So, I mean, that's just, uh, just a... Uh, again, uh, to, you, so you, you, take, you take silken tofu. To, I'm, I'm sorry, soaked tofu, bless you. I got, I got you, got gotcha. you. Okay. That, that sounds brilliant. I, I think that's a much smarter idea. 
then unless you can find some sort of a tofu, I mean, a tofu, now you got me going, Paul, find it, find a yogurt that, uh, that, that truly is unsweetened. But otherwise it's just, you know, like, like I showed you, usually they're 12 to 18 grams of added sugar. That's three to four uh, teaspoons of sugar that are in those yogurts. And most of us just, we don't need it. And I, it's so funny. I have so gotten out of the habit uh, of, of doing yogurts. I, I used to do yogurts, the, you know, the, 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 um, the plant-based ones for a number of years, but I don't think I've touched them. No exaggeration in probably, probably a decade. And I haven't missed them at all. Same thing with cheese. It's like, I don't miss any of the, 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 the plant-based cheeses, you know, the dias, the, um, uh, anyway, the myriad of plant-based cheeses that are out there. Yeah. You know, and, and what you could do is if you got like, if you give up the cheeses, you know, believe me, you know, it's trade-offs and, and I'll put like nutritional yeast yeah, and then add something on a piece of whole wheat bread and I'll put it in the oven and I'll kind of bake it up a little bit. And you know what, guess what? It tastes pretty close. So the goal is, is to find healthier alternatives and choices. Yeah, yeah. Marion, you got any more? Yes. Um... Here's a question. Somebody's asking um, all the, the doctors, um, you know, talk about all the various nutrients and micronutrients we get, we need to get every day. Um, for example, like Furman talks about G bombs and um, like uh, who else? Is it? Gregor talks about different foods we need. And somebody's question, somebody is asking, how do you get all these foods in, in one day? Like, what, you know, what, what is your view on our daily food intake needs? Mm -hmm. How much physical food do we, we actually need? And what is your typical food, daily food like? That's a, that's a lot. Of, that was a lot. So I will say this. Um, if you haven't gotten the book or read Fiber Fueled, I, I highly recommend it. It's by a gastroenterologist named Dr. Will Bolshewitz. Um, and he's, he's fantastic. And what his recommendation is, um, is that we, we try and get 30 different types of whole plant-based foods into our bodies per week, per week. So I, I would not get, um, I would not obsess over getting all these different foods in every single day. But if I think if you can get 30 and it's easy, like I just look at my big bowl cereal in the morning and I've got four different types of whole grains that are in the cereal. I've got walnuts, I've got chia seeds, I've got hemp seeds. I got ground flaxseed meal. And then I typically have three different types of fruit. Usually two of them are frozen. I get 12 to 15 just in my breakfast cereal. Um, and so I wouldn't obsess over, you know, making sure you're getting, you know, this and this and that. And I know that, you know, that Furman and, uh, and, and Gregor can make you feel like, oh my God, I need to get this, I need to get that. I like to keep things super, super simple. And if you're just eating, whole food, plant-based, uh, and you're just eating fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and beans. I'm not worried right now about sprouting. I'm not worried about, oh gosh, you know, um, intermittent fasting and all these other things. I just keep it simple. And that's why I think I've been successful doing it now for 33 years that I've right. been doing this. Um, I, I could answer a quick one. It says, um, yeah. somebody asks, they're 64, almost 65. Uh, is it uh, too late to start weight training? The answer is absolutely not. Just take it really slow. Uh, and, and there's your answer right there, period. I mean, just don't wait. Don't, don't, don't. Tomorrow, start tomorrow, that person who asked the question. And then the other one uh, I see real quick, uh, intermittent fasting, you just addressed it. You know, there's a lot of good studies on yeah. uh, pro and con, but rip a quick one on intermittent fasting. No, I, I think that... Um... It depends where you are right now. I would tell you if you're not whole food plant-based, then I wouldn't mess with it. I would like first try and become whole food plant-based. And then if you want to like experiment, but I think first you want to get, you know, become whole food plant-based, experience all the benefits of that. And then if you want to experiment with uh, 16 hours off, eight hours yeah. on, then then go for it. Um, hey, hey, hey Rip, you know, it's interesting. I did that over the winter. Yeah, where I went intermittent fasting for an eight hour stint, 16 off. And um, I'm back just generally eating, you know, my meals throughout the day that are whole food plant based. And I will promise everybody. Yeah, I, I may have lost a few more pounds, but but, but I don't need to lose that much anyway. 
yeah. but I yeah. didn't I didn't see anything different. And I've been a religious 30 mile a day bike rider for the last year. So I mean, uh, I'm saying uh, that I haven't seen any kind of uh, down or upside to doing it. Um, and I rip, I could not agree more. Just work on being whole food plant based the best you could be. Um, so uh, I think this is going to be our very last question, by the way, for everybody. If there's a question that you have, please send it to connect at pbnsg.org. I'll forward it over to Rip. He'll respond to me and we'll respond to you. And lastly, uh, don't forget, we have an incredible cookbook. It's one of the, I think it's the only no oil cookbook out there, 150 recipes contributed by, well, thank you, Marianne, uh, by 23 different chefs. And we're going to be adding like four new chefs in the next month or two. But uh, we have that available on the website. Uh, so as an athlete, how often do you train right now, Rip? Every day. Yeah, I'm, I'm six days a week myself. And uh, yeah. And, and now, and, now, now, I, I, now, one day, one day is usually drop dead easy where I'm recovering. But I like to just get in the pool and just stretch and go real slow for like 30 minutes. But that's my easy day. But every, every day I do something. Right. And, and I'm with you on that. You know, I mean, I actually just bought a, a bike for the house because it's getting cold and uh, I may melt or I may freeze or something. But uh, I find one thing that is that to me is so remarkable. I am 62 years old. And like I said, I've been bike riding every day, 30 miles every day. And guess what? I'm never sore. I'm never sore. Yeah. I'm, I'm never sore. How about you, Rip? I mean, that's why we go at it every day. But how do you feel each day? No, I feel I feel great. There are there are times when I get sore, but that's usually only when I'm trying to beat up on some 28 year olds, right? And I really push myself, and the next day I'm like, oh man, I feel that. But it's in a it's a good way. It's in a good way. Yeah. Yeah. Well, here, here's a little omission, everybody. When I ride my bike, I'm usually by myself, and I get to put my uh, I get to put my music on. And you know what kind of music I I'm into? If if anybody wants my playlist, email me. It's a rap music, and boy, do I go old school and new school. So I'm a, I'm a pretty cool guy now. Yeah, all right, you are. Uh, all right, well, listen, everybody, I want to thank you individually, collectively, that we got to have this moment with Rip. Rip, my brother, you started us. You're here today. You're on our board. I personally love you, your family, and I want to have a big thank you to you from all of us. Ready? Wee! <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>